This is the main screen that you will see once you log on to the Lock and Bar can access. In this choice place, you will be able to select which device you would like to look at. It sorts by serial number, site, or city. In this case, we'll sort them by site. We see over here, the site listed that we're going to look at today is the Chapman House. It gives a boiler serial number, and it can give an address or a city, whatever is put in. Once selected, the Connexus will download the device data. Here we see the main screen of what's happening with our boiler at this moment in time. This boiler is currently in standby, not responding to uh, a call or anything as nothing's been given it to it at this time. But we can look at all of our temperatures, outdoor temperature, we'd see our system supply temperature, and our boiler temperatures. Over here we'll see the modulation rate of the boiler. The boiler is currently in standby, the modulation rate is zero. In our view menu is where we will be able to look at all the various screens that the lock of our smart control has to offer. This main boiler screen gives us all of our temperatures and what's happening with each item within the boiler. Fan speeds, switches, safeties, all those, we will see those right here as to what's happening. we we'll move over to the modulation screen, we would actually be able to see here on this screen our fan speeds, our target and our actual, and our boiler temperatures, our delta T flu temperature, various other things. In the cascade screen, gives us an idea of what's happening currently in the cascade. This is the leader of a three boiler setup. Notice it says condensing and non-condensing. The lock in our smart control has the ability to do a mixed plant. For example, you could have a copper fin boiler connected with an FTXL boiler. And front end load it in the shoulder months with your lock and bar FTXL. We move to the building management screen. In this case it shows that our screen is our building management is currently inactive. We're not using it at this site. In graphing, you would be able to graph any of these different points over the last 30 days. History, we'll get an idea of what's happening with various lockouts, what's happened. And then you could actually go and view them and see what was happening in the boiler at the moment of lockout. Service notes, here you could enter, your service technician could enter a note as to what he did at the time that he was on site. Great reference tool for the future. Our setup screen, here we can make changes to the boiler's programming or check and see what's going on at the time. We can see the various set points as well as the domestic hot water set points, our automatic reset, manual reset high limits here. And take a look at just what's happening at any given time. Here's a little quick setup. What's our time zone? What's our date and time? Here's our just our space heating one outdoor air reset screen. In advanced setup, take a look at our freeze protection and our anti-cycling settings. Hot water setups, whether we're a zone or normal. For our domestic hot water, in this case it's normal, piped off the boiler. Also we can see our maximum fan speed. In this case we can use all 500,000 BTUs, so there was no need to limit the firing rate in a domestic hot water call for this boiler. Here's our pump setup. How do we want our pump to respond? 
and in this case also setting up our domestic hot water research pump. Now we can set up our individual outdoor reset curves. Each one's done, one, two, and three, all done separately. And you'll notice that it kind of gives you the look of what your curve looks like all at once, making it very simple. And as you make an adjustment, you'll see how that's going to affect the curve across the entire operating range of that boiler. A good tool to let you know what's going to happen so you can kind of see it there. Here's our shutdown temperature. Here's our shift reset curve down here if you just want to make a quick adjustment and increase or decrease the targeted water temperatures. And then our boost time and temperature. Get into how we're controlling our boiler pump and system pump. But real important here is this delta T set point. This is when you connect an ECM pump to the lock and bar smart control and it'll send a 0 to 10 volt signal out to drive that boiler. In this case, maintaining a 20 degree delta T. Here's setting up our cascade. In this case, the address is 0, so it's the leader. Which way do we want it to go? And then in our leader set point, again, you see a cascade for condensing and non-condensing. the bottom you'll see this number of boiler pumps always on. We can use this with isolation valves in a full flow system to keep an isolation valve or perhaps two open to provide constant flow for the system. We can turn our BMS on. In this case it's grayed out because it's inactive. By making it active, we can then determine if we are a set point or a power input on that 0 to 10 volt signal, and how do we want the boiler to respond at the various points. Our ramp delay screen. This is going to set up our various stages of ramp delay, and at the bottom we'll pick the, the time and the limit for each stage. Night setback. So in this case, we could tell the boiler that we want to drop temperature or we want to increase temperature, which we want to do. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, we want to drop temperature, obviously. And then when do we want to start and stop those? Same thing can be done for our domestic hot water as we reset our water temperature at night or on the weekends if we're in some sort of commercial application. Our service notification screen, who's going to get a notification? and what for. We either send the updates we've made or we revert the changes and don't make any at all. And we return to the main account screen. We want to register a new device. We are able to scan the device using our smartphone or tablet. We would scan the QR code. And then we would scan the boiler's barcode. If you can't scan them, you can actually enter those parameters here. Once you've done that, you would click on register and that would register a new device. 